Funding for Shape Realist is provided by Raycon Earbuds, the sponsor of today's video. Ever since making my Ratatouille review, I've had a nagging question in the back of my mind. What about Ratatouille? I can't just not complete the duology, right? Oh yeah, in case you haven't heard, Ratatouille is a mockbuster made by Brazilian studio Video Brinquedo designed to leech off the success of Ratatouille. They do this with every animated movie ever, release a cheap knockoff at the same time as the real movie in order to trick grandmas into picking it up. Blah blah blah, it's not important. What's important is that this movie, which only exists for cynical commercial reasons, is inexplicably rife with subtle political and socioeconomic commentary. Was any of it intentional? No, absolutely not. Nobody in this production ever once stopped to think about what they were doing when making this pile of feces. But I think the underlying messages this movie puts forth about capitalism and monopolies are absolutely fascinating. Before we get to that though, we have to discuss what this movie's about and also why it's really, really, really bad. If you want to get straight to the political and socioeconomic analysis, use the time bar to skip ahead. But for now, it's bad movie deep dive time. Well, hey there, James. I see you're currently working on Ratatouille. Do you mind if I cut in and join the review? Oh, hey, oh, Chris. By all means, help me get through the cinematic abomination. I don't want to do this alone. Ratatouille. So right off the back, I have one question. Why is the title voiced? Did they really need it to be voiced? Of course it needed it, Chris. How dare you question the genius of Video Brinquedo? Man, these intro credit backgrounds look pretty darn good for a Video Brinquedo work, considering they did the little panda fighter and we all know how god-awful that movie is. So I've done some math here. The intro credits take up 1 minute and 30 seconds of screen time, which when you think of the length of the movie, which is 44 minutes, that's a whopping 3% of this movie is just intro credits alone. Good Lord! The Marvelous City. This is a prosperous city. In the heart of this city, the most notable residents of the city. Hey guys, do you think this movie takes place in a city? I'm not sure. Also, I like how they don't name Rio de Janeiro, they just call it The City. Come on, come up with something a little more original than just The City. So now we get to see the finest rat eatery in The City, Ratatouille which is frequented by these abominations. Oh my god, what in god's name is up with the character design? Good grief! They all have this like super evil joker grin and what's going on with their eyes? Is the white dot the pupil or is it a gleam from their dead soulless eyes? I'm very fixated on their jaws personally. There's something so mesmerizing about this empty black void with these disconnected black and pink squiggly lines inside. So uh, have you noticed yet? Their mouths kind of, you know, stutter a bit. I know it's low budget, but surely that could have been fixed in quality control. Quality control? <laughs> That's the most ridiculous thing you've ever said. It's divine, don't you agree, Oscar? Dan, 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 dan. No, 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 no. <laughs> well, apparently, according to this one rat, fine dining places don't exist in Rio, or at least aren't attended by the working class rats. Surely they have some fine dining if Rio hosts the Brazilian Grand Prix, right? Right? Anyway, we get to waste more time with these alien rats arguing about their food or not knowing what to order, and it's truly riveting. I'm riveted! Eventually, we finally get to meet the prestigious chef himself, Marcel Toyn. He's just as underwhelming as I expected. I like how Marcel mixes all of his food in a tin can. PRECISELY! I also like how they have thumbtacks for stools and step ladders and bottle caps as plates. That's actually pretty cool for a low budget set design. And those mini rat paintings bring the whole restaurant vibe together. Careful, Chris. I don't think this movie is used to positive feedback. I'm glad you know the ordering habits of your clientele. Hmm. Keep it in your pants, you two. And for you, the worm burger with cheddar. Junior, you really need to stop eating the junk food. It's not healthy for you. Yeah, this seems like a conversation you probably should have had before he ordered it. But that ain't cheese. It's just plastic. You're kidding. That's okay, Mom. As it happens, I'm also very partial to plastic. What is wrong with this movie? Editing is hard, you guys. Stop judging this movie. It's doing its best. Precisely. I'm just the waiter. I don't know the recipes. Oh, you must know. Come on, tell us. Yeah, pal, I'm certain all the KFC workers know the 11 herbs and spices they put into their famous Kentucky Fried Chicken. Great, now I'm hungry for some KFC. The actual secret ingredient that can be found in all of the food prepared here is lots of... Come on, out with it! Lots and lots and lots of... Spaghetti! Okay, so as it turns out, these four rats are from a rival rat restaurant, and they want to steal Marcel's secrets in order to make their own restaurant successful. The secret ingredients of Ratatouille! I can't believe he didn't notice! He may be a great cook, but he's not very smart. Bitch, you were the one who wrote Ingredientes Secretos Ratatouille on a notebook that you handed to him, and you're calling him stupid? 
stupid? Can we just agree that you're both stupid and call it a day? Who would have guessed a Brazilian made film to steal fans from Ratatouille would involve corporate espionage? I was gonna write down for this script how the other restaurant owners asking Marcel for his secrets would be like a Popeyes employee walking into KFC and doing that. But nope, didn't need to. It plays literally right out in the movie. Our only hope of returning to our success is to get rid of Chef Marcel Toing. Wait, 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 wait. They're plotting to kill Marcel Toing? What the actual shit is this? So we've gone from a typical bootleg based on Ratatouille to a film about corporate espionage to a film about literal corporate warfare all within the first 14 minutes. And there's a half an hour left. What are they gonna do? Nah, I don't think they're trying to kill Marcel Toing. I think they're just... Wait, what? Sorry, what was I talking about? I'm, I'm, I'm just absolutely mesmerized by this epic spy montage and this featureless white void. I, I just, wow. I've never seen such epicness before. It's like they could have just suited up in this inexplicable spy gear in the kitchen. But no, they created an entire pocket dimension for this montage. That's pretty avant-garde, I have to say. By far, my favorite character is Greg. During their kidding up scene that takes two minutes and we see it three more times, I'm not joking. While Marcel and Carol suit up, he just puts on some sneakers, eats some cheese, and calls it good. Precisely! All right, get in, losers. We're stealing ingredients from a human kitchen, apparently. Marcel performs a pro gamer spy maneuver to grab a strawberry, but then gets ceiling fanned after Greg flips a switch like the dumbass he is. Greg could have just literally flipped the switch and turned the fan off, but nope, he had to try and grab onto him. That was actually pretty funny. There's also a pretty big goof during and after the kid up scene. Greg has a pair of sneakers on for a majority of it, then they just kind of disappear into the shadow realm. Another interesting goof I noticed is that Carol says that they never serve chocolate in the restaurant. So how did she serve some earlier in the movie? The inconsistencies just continue to pile up. Anyway, one of the rival rats discovers the secret human kitchen since the dipshit waiter just left the doors of the restaurant wide open after closing. Now, interestingly enough, the rival rats say that they don't want to steal ingredients from the human restaurant because it's too dangerous. So they instead plan on sabotaging Marcel's supply lines in a presumably less dangerous way. The resulting montage is interesting to say the least. I'm genuinely at a loss for words right now. Now, I know this is a lot to take in, but I assure you, I can explain. Let me explain. Um, y you see, in order to avoid danger, the rats have decided to form a giant orgy in the middle of the restaurant during business hours. Obviously, they are not stepped on or stabbed or killed during this giant anarchist orgy. Orgy <laughs> during this... <laughs> <laughs> I would like to order the orgy porgy. Hell yeah. Obviously, they are not stepped on or stabbed or killed during this giant anarchist orgy. That would be unrealistic. Speaking of unrealistic, obviously the rat orgy doesn't cause the restaurant to get shut down due to blatant health code violations. That would be ridiculous. Join us in the real world sometime, dumbass. All week long, I've been using the same ingredient in all the dishes we're serving, and now I can't even and the smell of strawberry. How exactly does one strawberry feed an entire restaurant that's completely booked for a week? I'm so confused by that. I understand a few strawberries, but one? I ain't buying it, chief. So after a reprise of the epic suit up void montage, we head back to the kitchen and see that there's a ton of traps now. Traps that are completely ineffective since they left Marcel completely unharmed and only disintegrated the cheese. Yeah, this restaurant really seems to know what they're doing. But don't worry, they have the perfect defense. This horrifying cat monster abomination thingy. I'm really confused. Why did the cat hide in the sink? Don't cats hate water? Well, at least most of them do anyway. Most people know that cats and dogs can't have chocolate. So why would you you leave it out when your second line of defense against a rat is a cat. And do I even need to say anything about the design? It's just plain weird. Unfortunately, this means the missions failed. No new ingredients were acquired. We'll get them next time. So there's two shots I find really intriguing that got left in. One is Carol talking to the elderly couple again and apologizes for the inconvenience of not having certain ingredients. But towards the end of it, it just becomes a still frame with her talking over it. Sorry for any inconvenience. Then immediately after that, while she's talking to Marcel, there's a quick two-second clip of Marcel just stirring his tin can. As the wise angry video game nerd would say, 
What were they thinking? Precisely! Oh well, all that matters is that ratatoying is failing without new ingredients. J j j j just just ignore the cheese that, that's on the shelf back here. Th those aren't ingredients that can be used at all. They're, they're, they're just, uh, plastic. Completely inedible plastic. I'm also very partial to plastic! Oh god damn it! But yeah, the rival rats successfully sabotaged ratatoying. And it resulted in no benefits to their own restaurant's business whatsoever. They never thought they'd get this far. So it was too dangerous for the rival rats to get food from the kitchen before. But now that the kitchen is filled with traps due to their actions, now they're gonna go steal from the kitchen. They could have just not had the big orgy and gotten the traps put there, but they're not too bright. I guess you could say that was their calculation precisely their final adventure into the human kitchen is certainly something there's another animation goof here when the cat spontaneously appears out of hyperspace behind marcel after marcel says there's no sign of the cat where did the cat come from it's also incredible how this cat literally just stares at marcel and then at carol and greg instead of you know eating the rat who is right in front of him which is his f***ing job and now suddenly the other rats plan on robbing them and then change their mind because greg says to get their own cheese but why don't you think there's enough cheese here for all of us go get your own but watch out for the traps do you think the script had zero punctuation in it for those lines or did mike pollock do that himself either way i have questions another question is how are the snacks that marcel makes loved by a cat Cats and rats are natural enemies. Wait, why am I even questioning this when this is from a bootleg movie? Oh, my brain hurts so much. Yeah, Marcel has managed to tame the cat monster using snacks from his backpack. They turn the rival rats into the humans, and now they've got a deal going where the cat lets them steal shit in exchange for free food from Marcel. Bribery is cool, kids! Well, ratatoying was a thing. I don't quite get the ending scene since Marcel basically had a hand in getting his fellow competitors sent off to the laboratory. Craig saying precisely is now burned into my brain until I die. I love how he says it twice in the ending. It's like he thinks they're all laughing at his hilarious catchphrase so he has to say it again and rake in even more laughs. Precisely. And also after doing the math, 10%, yes, 10% of this movie is just credits. I wouldn't rate it highly, but I'd give it a solid five and a half. Damn, that's pretty high. Uh, I give the movie a 3 out of 10 solely out of ironic enjoyment. However, it was unironically a better spy thriller and overall movie than Cars 2. It was less insulting, less boring, the characters were less stupid, and it was less than half the length. So yeah, suck it, Pixar. Anyway, thanks for joining me for this review portion, Chris. Now I'm gonna take center stage for the political and socioeconomic analysis of Ratatouille. But before we get into that, let's take a quick time out and talk about something even cooler than this rat spy gear. Raycon earbuds. The everyday E25 earbuds are amazing. They fit so comfortably in my ear and the sound quality they offer is just fantastic. The everyday E25 earbuds offer six continuous hours of playtime, simple Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and a more compact design that gives you a nice, noise isolating fit. Plus, they got so many stylish colors. I absolutely love using Raycons for anything and everything, from editing, to watching Netflix shows, to listening to music on the go. Raycons are perfect for any situation where I'm in the need for some high quality sound to enjoy, and they make an amazing holiday gift as a result. If you have any friends who work from home but don't want to disturb their roommates, Raycons are the perfect gift this holiday season. Raycon earbuds start at about half the price of any other premium wireless earbuds on the market, which is crazy given the level of sound quality they offer. They're incredible budget friendly yet they sound just as amazing as other top audio brands you know if you want some for yourself go to buyraycon.com slash shaferless to get 20 percent off your order click the link in the description box below and get them soon because this is a limited time offer again that's buyraycon.com slash shaferless check them out and thanks to raycon for sponsoring this video okay back to the socioeconomic analysis of ratatoying right off the bat i think the most interesting deviation between ratatouille and ratatoying is how both movies treat the idea of stealing. In Ratatouille, stealing is a big no-no. A cook makes a thief. Hicks. Remy is incredibly passionate about cooking. It is, after all, his art form. His conscience, in the form of Chef Gosteau, constantly tells him that it's bad to steal. It's beneath him as an artist. And ultimately, he comes to fully realize that stealing is wrong by the end of the movie. 
Ratatoying laughs in the face of this moral. Stealing is A-OK, -okay, kids. Marcel Toying and his restaurant buddies steal shit from the kitchen all the time. How else are they gonna keep their own restaurant afloat without those sweet, succulent human ingredients? Never once does the idea that stealing is wrong come up in this movie, which makes sense since that would contradict the movie's very existence. Also notable is how Marcel never really expresses his passion for cooking like Remy does. It truly seems like he only values cooking for its commercial benefits. It gave him his restaurant and his reputation, but it doesn't seem to be the cornerstone of his soul. The main conflict of this movie is not following your culinary passions in spite of the world telling you no, it's how are we gonna keep stealing shit from the kitchen with all these traps? Marcel Toying is not an artist. He is an entrepreneur, and a pretty genius one at that. He holds a distinct competitive advantage over anyone who dares challenge him in the rat restaurant business. The rats from the other restaurant resent him so thoroughly that instead of stealing ingredients from the same source as Marcel, they sabotage him and make it so no one can get those ingredients except the human restaurant. Ultimately, they realize that doing this has not helped their own restaurant. They really didn't think about the implications of getting traps put in the human restaurant when they could have simply also stolen from the human and made better food as a result. This begs the question, who are the true villains of this story? The movie wants you to believe it's these rival rats, since they act all mean and sus to our hero, Marcel Toying, and his other rat friends who have names that I already forgot. When I first watched the movie, I thought Marcel was the villain. He steals food and gets off scot-free, and when the other rats try to get a piece of this action, they get sent off to a lab to be experimented on. Marcel and the rival rats are both in the wrong, but the movie is firmly on Marcel's side, which is a load of barnacles. But then, I really thought about it, and everything became clear. The villain of Ratatoying is not the rival rats, or Marcel Toying. It is the 1%, represented by the human restaurant. They hoard all these ingredients that they probably don't need, and the lower class rats are forced to scrounge for scraps and garbage. I mean, really think about it for a second. Let's say the human restaurant has 100 strawberries for any given week. Would it really make a difference if they gave the rats one of these 100 strawberries? A single strawberry managed to feed Marcel's restaurant for an entire week. The restaurant managed to end the rats' hunger just by giving up one of their strawberries, which, by the way, they absolutely did not miss, since they didn't even know rats were stealing their food until the rival rats had their orgy. Losing one strawberry made no difference. The humans still have 99 damn strawberries for the entire week which is more than enough. It's more than they could ever realistically need. You're so I know, but I've got all the strawberries. You. Instead of identifying the human hoarders as the true root of evil, the rival rats try and take down Marcel Toying, who is rightfully stealing food that the rich doesn't need, something they could be doing too in order to save their own restaurant and survive. But instead, they target the middle lower class person out of spite, because they can't grasp that the system is the problem, not the people who are doing their best to survive within said system. By the end of the movie, the system remains firmly in place, with the only difference being that there's now a mole, or cat, in the human kitchen that can help the rats steal food in exchange for bribes. It's a very cynical ending for a very cynical movie. At least Ratatouille ended with a select few humans making peace with rats and coexisting. Ratatouille is far more pessimistic, but at least the rats are still getting food from the human's large stash. Oh wait, that would imply that the food is being fairly distributed amongst the rats. But it's not. Marcel Toying is hoarding everything he steals from the humans in order to keep his business's competitive advantage. Not only that, but he encourages this demon cat to take two of the rival rats to the humans in order to make his thievery easier. He sold out his fellow rats just to keep his monopolistic hold on the rat restaurant business. Congratulations, Marcel Toying. You are not just a coward, you are a class traitor. Precisely. So yeah, this might be the most cynical ending I've ever seen in a children's film. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my reading of Ratatouille's completely accidental political themes. Uh, for the love of God, do not take this analysis seriously. I guarantee the creators of this movie did not take the movie they were making seriously. Uh, thanks for watching. Good night, Tri-State Area.